Hi guys, Max here and welcome back to the channel. In this part I'm gonna cover the differences between the new Ryzen 2700X and the previous generation, plus a comparison in gaming with the Intel i7-7700K. But I don't like to talk too much with boxes in my hand so let's get straight to the point and let me show you some numbers. In this first part I'm using a Ryzen 7 1700, a Ryzen 7 2700X and an Intel Core i7-7700K. For the memory, a kit of uh, G-Skill Flare X 3200C14 and a kit of G-Skill Trident Z 4500. A couple of ASUS motherboard, a Crosshair 6 and uh, a Z170i Gaming. The GPU is an NVIDIA 1080 running at stock speed. To better understand the differences between the Zen and Zen Plus, I clocked the CPU at 4 GHz. All the components are the same, same frequency and same BIOS settings. As you can see, we have a 10% improvement in the memory latency, a 28% in L2 cache and 15% in L3 cache. 10% may not seem a big thing, but you will see in a moment how latency affects the overall performance. In the first test of PC Mark 10, we see an overall improvement by 5%. But what really matters in this test is the app startup. We have a 13% increase. You will feel this improvement in the general usage of Windows. In digital content creation we have a good overall improvement, but remember this test was done at 4 GHz fixed, so the 2700X can boost up to 4.35. For the same reason, even in Cinebench, the real difference is more or less 5%. Productivity. You can write your letter 7% faster. Does anybody cares about this benchmark? I'm curious, please write me what you think in the comment section. In the gaming benchmark of PC Mark 10, we have an overall improvement by 7%. 10% in Fire Strike 180p. And now let's start the most important part of this review gaming and overclocking. In the next video I will test more games, but for this part I will use Tomb Raider because it's a full DirectX 12, Metro Last Light because I have DirectX 11 and is more sensitive to the single core performance, and World of Warcraft which is very sensitive to the single core performance, plus issues of the singularity escalation. And the CPU test is optimized for multi-core CPU. As you can see we have an average of 10% increase in FPS. Remember the 10% of the memory latency? Here it is. And once again, remember that we are 4 GHz. And with the first generation of Ryzen, we are at the end of the road. With Zen Plus, we have the boost, which gives us another 300 MHz. Talking about the boost, I want to show you something that I already shared with you in the previous video. If you look at the first part, related to the frequency, you will see that we have a base clock of around 4 GHz and some spike at 4.35 when is needed a single core boost. But to be able to do it, you need a proper cooling. In this test, I was running with my custom loop and we reached the maximum speed. With the stock cooler, you probably will see 4.3, 4.25. Don't take in consideration the temp because it's clearly wrong. I think we have a bias problem with the sensors. The real temp was about 50 to 60 degrees. As you can see, the memory is a big player in this configuration. By increasing the memory speed from 3200 to 3500, we have a 9% increase, where Intel only 5. Competing with the 7700K is not easy, and Ryzen with this new generation is almost there. And I'm sure that with the new chipset, there will be another improvement in this area. With the stock cooler, even though it's not the perfect cooling solution, you can manage to overclock the CPU at 4.2, in my case with 1.4 volts. In this test, which is a full stress test for all the cores, you can see 80 degrees, but in gaming the temp is around 60. Going back to the custom loop, I can manage to overclock the system to 4.2 with less volts, 1.35, 1.33. 
with temp around 50 to 60 degree. Uh, honestly, I don't know what of the two sensor is the correct one. So let's say 50 to 60. I was able to overclock the system at 4.3, stable, but the voltage needed was 1.46 and honestly for me it's a bit too much for a 24-7 configuration. This is what you can expect if you want to overclock uh, your CPU. I know that most of you was hoping to reach uh, 4.5 or even more. But honestly, for a dice ring and 2 nanometers of improvement in the process, uh, we cannot ask too much. And even with a new chipset, don't expect an improvement in frequency. We can have improvement in memory, latency, but this is the silicon limit of this chip. As you can see, the boost is working very good, because even if you overclock your CPU, the improvement is not that great. And only in World of Warcraft you see like 10 FPS, but in the other is even worse if you overclock your system because the, the boost can reach higher clocks than your maximum overclock speed. And again, what makes the difference is the memory, so personally if you have to overclock this system, I will start with the memories. So in conclusion of this first part, did the CPU met my expectation? To me it's clearly a yes. If you think that I was testing with a board with a beta BIOS, and really was uh, painful to test it because uh, I had a lot of problems. If I look at this test, to me it is the worst case scenario. In the future we can only see improvements. And we are talking about a 10% in gaming plus an overall gain in performance. A boost mode that finally works and with little or no need to overclock and a stock cooler with the same level of most of the aftermarkets. Now let's talk about the expectation of the new chipset. Again, to me, the new chipset will bring more performance because it's related to memory, so I'm expecting higher memory speed, maybe 4 GHz, maybe a bit less, but for sure the gap between Ryzen and Intel is getting shorter. I will keep testing with many more games at all the resolution and with other CPU, like you suggested in the comments, but it takes time. I want to give you all the details, but only after an intensive testing and an accurate analysis. The next video will be the new chipset and memory scaling. The next one will be with extreme cooling and more. So stay tuned and see you in the next video.